in the dead of night. Clifton in Bristol. Nothing much stirs at this hour except for the foxes. And at 2 a.m., the tyre extinguishers. Setting off to disable every 4x4 or SUV they can find. It's unclear whether this is a crime. Different police forces have different views. It's not listed as an offence, nor tested yet in court. It takes a few seconds per vehicle. And it's walk where you hardly ever stop. It's incredible how quick it is, it's a matter of seconds. Uh, at each vehicle. Tyres left to deflate, a notice explaining why tucked into the windscreen. It states, We need emergency action to reduce emissions immediately. We're taking actions into our own hands because our governments and politicians will not. You could be interfering with the life and death situation doing this, couldn't you? They said they accept that's a possibility, but added in the grand scale of things, the climate crisis will kill billions of us if we carry on as we are. Their actions will enrage many, but the science is clear, whatever you think of their methods. Last year, the International Energy Agency made a finding which stunned their own researchers. SUVs were the second largest cause of the global rise in carbon dioxide emissions over the past decade. Look at this. Conventional cars at the top are actually reducing carbon dioxide emission growth rates. Going down in increasing emission order, we have aviation and shipping, lorries, heavy industry. Then in second place, the growth rate of SUV CO2 emission. Only the power sector pumps out more. If 4x4s were a nation, they'd be the sixth biggest global polluter. Campaigners also say SUVs are dangerous, and US government research shows pedestrians are twice as likely to be killed if hit by an SUV. Surprisingly, people inside 4x4s are 11% more likely to die in a crash. And what gives you guys the right to effectively take, well, actually take the law into your own hands? They said current laws are directing us to catastrophe. Science tells us this is necessary, and they added, the government is putting the lives of our children in danger, so we have to act. We approached the Society of Motor Manufacturers, but they declined to comment. It's light now. The birds are waking, and so is Clifton. Commuting by various means is underway. Others have a nasty shock. We had to tell a trauma surgeon that her car tyre had been let down. She was about to drive off in it. I'm going to be half an hour late, so I've had to let the team know, so hopefully there won't be any delays that patient's care. But, you know, if I couldn't have gotten in, then someone's surgery that might be cancelled. The woman who owns this car with the deflated rear tyre is obviously angry and upset. She's got to get to a meeting, she says, today in Aylesbury. She told us that she'll use her husband's car, which is much older and, she says, has much higher emissions. I suspect if you've got a flyer on the windscreen... Yeah, they have, look. For God's sake. Yeah. I've got a meeting in a minute and I've got to get to work, so it's not very, not very helpful. That's rather British. <laughs> <laughs> not very helpful. Would it make you stop driving a 4x4 because of the emissions? and? So forth, would it change your attitude? No. <laughs> not at all? No. No. It's a waste of time. It's not, this is a hybrid, so I don't think the people that are doing this stuff know what they're doing. It's just, it's inconvenient and I don't think it's a very well thought out plan, to be fair. You know, the argument to say we can cycle everywhere, great, yes, we do cycle, but we can't cycle to the nursery with three kids, so, um, yeah, just <laughs> off, to be honest. Yeah, I can understand yeah. that. None of the victims of tyre extinguishers we spoke to said it would make them change their transport of choice. The police advise fitting dust cap anti-theft devices because these actions are spreading. Brighton, London, Glasgow, Edinburgh, and it seems unlikely to end there. <laughs>